This is Real Life with Deb Waterbury, a real show for real people with real issues. And now, here's your host, Dr. Deb Waterbury. Well, welcome. Today we have on the Real Life show my very special guest, Dr. Mike Catabaugh. Hi, Mike. Hi, Deb. How are you? I'm good. So we are talking today about, and we, we had Mike on before, you mentioned mm-hmm. this program that you have developed for married couples. Mm-hmm. And we, and we promised that we would do a show about it. So okay. this is and our we're show. we're here. This yeah. is the show, because I'm telling you, Mike does so much. You, you run the Encouragement Lab. <laughs> I do too much. I just came from a you meeting do. that I got told that. It's like, okay, you've got to cut down. Oh, and was the meeting specifically for that? Yes, it was. Oh, it was an intervention. Too, well, it was. It was an intervention. <laughs> if you want to be successful at what you're doing, you need to cut down. Oh. So yeah, but I'm not cutting down this. this okay, is, good. This, is this would be bad if we did a show and you were cutting <laughs> yeah, it down. It's over. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Bye now. No. We, so what we're talking about then is your hero marriage mm-hmm. program. So I know you do these. Um, there Are they set conferences or do people book you? I mean, how does that work? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm doing one uh, in January with a group of churches that got together and they're doing a marriage conference. It's called, oh, it's, they're called Hero Marriage Conferences. Yes. And uh, yeah, we just get together and help you have a hero marriage or hero relationship. Or I'm really excited about, about my new product coming out is a hero pre relationship, pre marriage. Is it like uh, premarital stuff? It's premarital counseling online with really? videos of me, this face. So you have to see this a lot. But <laughs> um, but yeah, it's videos of me with all my years of counseling and coaching and pastoring. Um, uh, uh, on relationships and the, the components you need to is have that a called hero, hero marriage. marriage as well. It's called hero premarriage. Yeah, really. It's one of my one of my four things mm. that you'll find on heromarriage.com. Which so we'll I'm talk so about of course later. my wheels are turning with my engaged son. Thank oh, there you go. Gosh, when you he, sign him up. I'm gonna sign him up. Okay. There's not even a need to. Shall happen. That All might right. Be for Christmas. That it, might you be know what? They're great. Christmas. It's a great Christmas. It's yeah. after Christmas now. It's a great yes. after Christmas. Yes, I'm. Well, we're taping this well. before Christmas, so I'm thinking about Christmas. But it's a great after Christmas. A great Buy it for 20, 20, 2021. That's right. Buy it for your five-year-old who's going <laughs> knowing, to get married someday. Knowing it will happen. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so hero marriage. Is, is hero an acronym for anything? Uh, great question. No, actually it's not. It's for, for being a hero. Oh, okay. I want, really you the, know what? I saw that. I wondered whether or not Yeah, I think I have an acronym for it or two out there somewhere in the hinterlands, but I don't. You don't remember what it, it was? It's not nearly as important it's to me as It's very impactful, wasn't it? Well, no, but here's the deal. <laughs> the word hero marriage is very intentional. Yes. We live in a culture that marriage has been discarded. Amen. And yet yeah. when I tell people, I've been married 32 years mm-hmm. successfully. Wow. My wife still likes me most of the time. See, there you go. <laughs> um, it, I get this reaction like, wow, you've been married. That A lot of younger people don't think that's an even possibility. Isn't that crazy? In their norm. And so I want to honor that by saying you can have a hero marriage. Mm-hmm. That literally choosing to stay with someone for a lifetime is not... And by the way... It's like every hero. They, they interview every hero, and they're like, I'm not a hero, That's right? That's true. That's true. I'm not a hero for being married. My wife may be, but I'm not. <laughs> um, but that's the goal is to say that you can have one of those if you put some certain practices yes. and skills into place in your relationship. Mm-hmm. You can have a hero marriage, and it starts way back in when you're first looking for a partner. It if you'll does. start then, it makes all the difference. And the thing is, we know all this. This is all facts that are easy to find. But it's intentionality, isn't it? It's intentionally it's moving toward what you know to be right as opposed to the easy escape rate route. Well, and that was one of the problems is, is you know, in the 70s and 80s, a lot of relationships just happen. It's like, okay, well, we're together. We might as well get married. Right, right. And that now ended with, I've got a, I've got a couple of clients right now that I coach that have been married seven times. Oh, bless them. Seven. Hopefully, this and they go back good. to the '70s, and they, <laughs> some of them do. <laughs> yes. um, but again, that was that was a cultural back context right. back then. Right. It's just right. oh, you know, and we were shifting, and that's a whole another three-hour show to talk about what's happened in our culture mm-hmm. to create this. Yes. My thing is, I want to find a way out, and. All the, the great news is, is that the Zoomers, you know, you've, you've done much study on the generation stuff. Yes, I've had to. Okay. Because I'm trying to reach all of them. Exactly. <laughs> the Zoomers are getting it. You know, and that's what my, you know, my son yeah. is in his 30s. Both of my sons are in their 30s, but my youngest son's 30. And he is very much uh, into that whole, the generational okay. stuff. And he was telling me that those are the youngest ones that are coming up, the Zoomers, yeah. are the ones who absolutely are moving back toward what we know to be 
absolutely appropriate. Right. But they're moving back toward that because yep. what they're doing is looking at everybody else and going, I do not want that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we've had a, you know, I'm, I'm technically a, a Gen Xer, so I'm kind of, we're kind of forgotten generation. Mm -hmm. We're like the second forgotten generation. And I'm definitely, I'm close to a baby boomer, but I'm, I'm a Gen Xer. And I'm a way Gen I, Xer as well, yes. Yeah, the way I behave and all that kind of thing. But um, but yeah, the, the Zoomers are getting it. And, and one of the reasons I put together Hero Marriage is to help, not just them, there's a lot of millennials that get it too, is that they want to have successful relationships, but they don't have any role models. Very good. Their parents... Their grandparents mm -hmm. all came from broken homes right, and, right. you know, just messed up. You know, they're in counseling and my coaching with me going, okay, I know how not to do it. Right. How do I do it? That's good. That's and that's good. really the, the story behind that is I want you to be able to have a hero relationship and well, hero marriage. Talk to, talk to us about what the structure of this is. I mean, how long does it take um, okay. and, and what does it look like? Because it's an online thing, right? Right. So, okay. so well, the hero, yeah. So my online courses run about six weeks each, okay. except for the hero pre-marriage course. It's a little shorter because okay. sometimes I want to be able to get people in and engaged in it. Yes. They can go back and visit it. Once you purchase my course, you have it for the rest of your life. Right. And that's one of the things I like about that. But but uh, so it's a little shorter because it's looking at specifically the things that you need to have in place before you get married. Hopefully you'll take my hero relationships course and my hero marriage course alongside with that and right. get in a group a coaching session that okay. I have with, with with groups of about 20 couples where we work together through that on kind oh, of a monthly good. basis. Okay. Do so you do kind that of personally thing. or is that like... Yeah, no, I do that uh, uh, online in, okay. in, in kind of a, you know, so you can be anywhere in the world and log in and we do these live sessions oh, where where couples good. are there. And, and I find that to be really important because it's not just me, the expert, talking to you. It's these other couples. And that's half the realization is realize that the struggle that you're having we're all having it. Mm -hmm. We've all had it. Right, right. My wife and I aren't perfect. Right. You know, I always say, uh, you know, I've got a beautiful wife. We've married 32 years, but there's some mornings I wake up, roll over and look at her and go, yuck. <laughs> We're going to cut that piece out. Okay. No, it's okay. She knows I say this because she rolls over a lot more than that and goes, yuck, right? <laughs> it's That's a mutual, your natural thing. Mutual yuck. But here's what's crazy, Deb, is she, she hasn't even woken up yet. Mm. She didn't do anything to deserve my yuck. Right, right. It's just some days I wake up and I'm, I'm like anybody. Of course, yes, I understand. I'm and we all do that, yes, right? Yes, I've been married and for so, almost 35 um, years, and I, there's a lot of times that I turn over. Yeah. I don't even turn over. He might just come home from work, and I'm like, yeah, what are you doing here? So, so what, a hero, <laughs> what a hero marriage does is it goes, okay, that's an emotion that's going to pass. Right. Tomorrow I'm going to like her again, and mm -hmm. tomorrow hopefully she's going to like me again. <laughs> yes. And we'll get back to the trust building that right, we've built right. into our relationships, and, and that to me is what a hero relationship is, looks and like. And don't do you find that it's it's a it's a different idea of commitment, because I feel like the, in the people that I counsel, especially young girls and and, uh -huh. and and men as well, that their idea of commitment is always contingent. Right. And I and I'm not is that, is that something that you feel like is addressed through what you do with hero marriage? Very much so. So a couple of. Uh, insights on what we teach. So a couple things that I find really important. Number one, we spend a lot of time talking about boundaries. Okay. And, and everybody knows what boundaries are these days. Oh yeah, I do have boundaries. Oh my goodness, I have this. Yes. But here's the problem is when I talk to, to, to couples and people about this issue and I say, so explain to me your boundaries. Their boundaries are always other driven. Okay. You mean that like they're setting a boundary against yeah. someone Yeah. Else. My boundary is you can't do this. I see. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's not how boundaries work. Right. My boundaries are mine. Right. So I always tell this abs abs uh, absurd, not absurd, absurd story, this, this idea that my wife, what if my wife came home from work today and said, you know what, Mike, I, we've been together 32 years, I love you a lot, but I met this new guy today at work. <laughs> and he's something, man. He's really cool. And, and we talked today at lunch, and he's married too, but we realized, you know, there's some stuff about each other we'd like to get to know better. So I'll tell you what, I want to stay with you, but just Monday through Friday. I'd like to spend the weekend with him. No, I'm guessing everybody watching this video will go, heck no, that ain't happening, right? No, no. And unfortunately, the problem is, and I get it, it's emotional, and that would cause a lot of emotion yes. in most marriages at that point, yes. right? Mm -hmm. That's why it's, it's absurd, right? right. Um, is the problem is, is the language you become, you can't do that. Mm. Guess what? My wife could do that. Of course. She could do whatever she really wants. And so here's, here's the aha moment about this boundary thing, is that... Instead, the proper perspective is, you know what, babe? Wow, that's shocking. That's, uh, <laughs> I didn't expect that after 32 years. I never saw this coming, but here's the, here's the magic. 
I can't do that. Mm, very good. Yeah. See the difference? Mm -hmm. So it's my boundary. That says I can't do this. I can't make you do, do or not do anything. I can try, but tr trust me, I've been in enough counseling, enough marriage counseling, it's, you're going to fail eventually. Right, right. You can make them do something for a long time. Controllers <laughs> try that really hard, but eventually you're going to fail. Mm -hmm. So what instead I can say is, you know what? I can't live that way. That's not acceptable. So because of my boundaries, I need you to choose because of me. Right. Either me or him. So it's perspective. It's a perspective and, and, on and, that boundary. And, and here's the thing is all of a sudden now, well, I'll be sad and upset and cry and, and wonder what happened. And, and by the way, I'm going to say you need to choose. And if you choose him, then where are we moving your stuff, right? <laughs> but if you choose me, where are we going to counseling? Right. I mean, we're going to have to work <laughs> yeah. on some more things, right? Right, right. But the dynamic here is that the power is just mine for me. Yes. And, and like I said, that's an absurdity. But yet every day I, I coach couples that are that are engaging their life in that in that crazy way. And you know, that's so good, Mike, because that's something I never think about. I have never thought about in terms of boundaries, because we do think of boundaries in terms of what other people can't do. Right. I'm going to set a boundary against you that you won't be able to do this or this won't be able to affect me mm -hmm. or this won't be able to do this. When in, when in effect, boundaries are personal, aren't they? Very, and, and they're only personal. If you read... You know, uh, Henry Cloud closely, he's saying that. It's just, it's, it's just over time we kind of fall into this trap of boundaries are for me to set for other people. Yes. And mm. the funny thing about that is I don't have control over it. Well, other how people. does that work in a marriage then? Like what would be a healthy boundary for me to set in a marriage that would be mine? Well, so a discussion, it's, it's ironic people don't have these. But one is like, so what is our expectations? Unfortunately, we live now in a culture where... People are defining, you say the word a marriage, and it can mean 40 different things, right? True, yes. You and I have a very Judeo-Christian mindset of what a marriage means mm -hmm. and what it's supposed to mean. Right. But nowadays, you can't assume that. So literally, it starts with when you're first dating, you go, okay, what does a permanent, what does a marriage look like to you? Mm. What is that? Um, you, know, you know, one of the aha moments I had years ago when I was getting trained as a focus trainer, which is one of the pre-marriage inventories that I've been trained to do. Is that you know one of the questions that most couples get wrong in before they're married is, uh, could you ever imagine us if if, if your ha spouse cheated on you, would you stay together? And the wrong answer is no. Of course, right. That's right. What, and that's what most people would say. Right. Now I'm not saying you should plan on that. No. <laughs> it's never happened in my 32 years, but the fact that it could still happen. Yes. Uh, I don't want to live in that reality, and and the reality is is that it would depend on the circumstances, yes. and it would depend on the on how it happened and why it happened and what's going. You know, I know marriages that get better after an affair. Uh, uh, Doesn't mean you should plan on having one because right, right. it's trust me, it's a train wreck during it. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is is that is that absolutism of you have to be this. My partner, you know, I told my wife when we got married, she was 19, that she had to stay this young and pretty the rest of her life. <laughs> How'd that work out for you? It, you know, my wife is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, she can't be young, though. But right. <laughs> so, so I've done a lot of weddings as a pastor. And it's, one of the things I love to do, this is kind of one of my passive-aggressive things. I, I just had a great time doing every wedding I ever did was I go back and I see the bride about 15 minutes. You know, everybody's assembling and she's already ready and ready to go. And she's back there doing the last hairdos and whatever. I go back and see her to make sure she's ready. I'm like, you ready? Yeah. And then I ask her a couple questions. Oh, dear. I can only imagine. Oh, these are great. <laughs> is this the guy for you? Oh, well, those are good questions. That though. one's a great question. Yeah. That's you, a good question. Yeah. Because I wanted to get her heart back. Because usually the bride at that point is surrounded by all these friends. And, and they're, the they're talking about everything yes. but why you're there. Yes. That's good. So I want to refocus Because it. the answer, of course, is yes, he is. But you're right. You yeah. want to be focused yeah. on what you're doing right then. Yeah. Well, what else do you ask her? Well, what? are you excited? Yeah. Yeah. But again, I'm refocusing. But right. then this is my, this is my passive aggressive one. Is there anything about him you want to change? Oh, what are the, what, what is come answers? Does anybody ever answer Every that? single woman I've ever asked that basically says, yep, I've got a list. Really? <laughs> Every one. <laughs> Every single one. Really? Even 15 minutes before they get married. Well, it's God like, bless them for he's their not, honesty. Right, yeah, he's not perfect. <laughs> now, I've, I've usually done the pre-marriage counseling here, right? right? So they already know. I already know that that's that's there, right? right she knows right. that about me. But but that's the dynamic there is that, oh, yeah, I got a list. And it, you know, it starts tonight, basically, sometimes <laughs> what I hear. You know, that's part of That's why we're here today that's is to adorable. begin the training, right? <laughs> yeah. But now here's what's amazing. 
I'll say, okay, well, I'm going to go back and be with the guys. So I'll go back and the guys and they're, the conversation, they're so different. It's all about, you nervous, man, you nervous, man. They're, you know, <laughs> usually they're stuffed into a closet because they got to come out from, you know, this is really funny space. And, and I'll ask him the same question. So you excited? Oh yeah. Is this, this, this the one for you? You're sure? Yeah. Is there anything about her you want to change? You know what? Every time. Once again, I'm batting a thousand on each one of these. Nope. I want her to say exactly the way she is. Really? Now, what's funny about that to me is our, by the way, that, that plays out in our desires for relationships. Right. You know, our, our friend, Dr. Lehman, who yes. lives here in Tucson, yes. uh, talks about the fact that men, men are looking for um, uh, uh, intimacy mm -hmm. in relationship yes. and women are looking for security. Ah. So our, our dynamics of what we're coming into this, what's funny though, is that women are looking to guys to make them feel secure by adapting to their needs ah. and we're unchangeable. <laughs> you know, this is, this is a good lesson. <laughs> we are guys are just unchangeable. You know, it, it's put, I'm, when I moved to Tucson four years ago from New Mexico, I made a big wardrobe change. I'm wearing them now. You can't see them, but they're down here. I made a big wardrobe. I went from khaki pants to gray. <laughs> That's been the big change. Big wardrobe change in my life. I still wear the same kind of shirts. Usually, you know, a lot of times they're buttoned down, but, and then short sleeve polos in the summer, right? Uh -huh. That was my big change. <laughs> All right. So I don't, men don't change very much. No, and yet right. women want to change this from the get go. That's true. And what's hilarious is guys want their wives to stay the same. Mm hmm. Because what are they? Because they want them young and pretty, or because of what? I don't understand. Yeah, it's just like. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. This is my perfect wife as she is. She needs to look this. You guys change your hair. My wife came home last night with a <laughs> totally new hairdo, <laughs> totally different, <laughs> right? And my That's wife true. is not a kind of person that changes a lot for from woman's change perspective. Change shoes four times Big a day. Bingo. <laughs> you know, you guys, you have this little monthly thing that makes a change, right? <laughs> We change personalities. Yeah, isn't that, isn't that hilarious? So Genesis three. Yes. Genesis three is is, is where this comes from. Okay. It, it's our desire for yes. what we want in a partner. Right. And yet, the very frustration of it because we're fallen creatures. Right. I'm marrying a person created in God's image, but guess what? They're messed up. Yes. And they're messed up like me. Yes. I'm messed up. Right. And so to me, that's part of the issue. So, so the two things I want to tell you about today, number one is that, is that setting boundaries are for yourself, not for your partner. Mm -hmm. And as you, as you go through a, a lifetime of commitments, hopefully your partner will keep adapting to your boundaries. Right. And that's a commitment that you should make early on is that's what we're going to do. Right. We're right. going to figure this out as we get here. I Not I, give up whenever I, it looks like I love to wake working. up the crowd when I'm doing a wedding ceremony. By saying, and it just, you know, as I work in the scriptures and stuff, at some point I will just say, now the two of you are going to be married 10, 11 times over the course of your lifetime. Excuse <laughs> me? <laughs> <laughs> That's when I see who's asleep and they're like, Wilford, <laughs> wake up. Did you hear what that pastor said? I think we need to, you know, he's, 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 the there's something wrong with him. He wants them to get married. To, and I say, and then I'll say, I hope you choose to marry each other mm. each time. And that's Cause, true. Cause haven't you, you done that? Yes. You've had to go to a place where you're like, I can't be with you, but I've chosen to be with you. So therefore we will redo this. Right. And life happens. Yes. Kids right. happen. Mm -hmm. Bills happen. Yes. My, my case, my wife had breast cancer. Yes. Cancer happens. Yes. And each time you make a choice, mm -hmm. this is the new journey we're going on. Yes. That's good. And that's, that's really why, good. and if you go in with that mindset saying this marriage is not a destination, you know, I love this, and, and I didn't come up with this. I, can't, I wish I, if I'd give credit whoever did. Somebody did, and it's brilliant. Is that marriage is the only thing we do where what it's supposed to look like in the end is modeled at the ceremony in the beginning. Wow. Isn't that amazing? That's true. Yeah. So when we get married on that day, it's like, this is the perfect relationship. Look how beautiful they are together. Here's this happy, beautiful they're pictures. Smiling. They're happy. They're smiling. And it's a picture of what the long-term journey should end as. And yet we start with the beginning with a picture of that. And we have to get there. And then we're aiming towards that. I, you know, I'm, hopefully at the end of this, you know, this we'll finally be are, there yes. at that. This, at that point, so, so I, I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to like, go to the hero marriage. Although I, my husband would be like, I thought we kind of went through all this stuff. <laughs> We've been together for so long. But honestly, I feel like this is something every marriage, mm -hmm. in every stage, whether beginning, middle, or end. Um, this, because you do read, you just re-up 
kind of re-up all the time. You do. It, it really is. It's and, like you got to reset. And matter of fact, I, I love the couples that go renew their vows. Yes. Or, um, you know, I, one of the things I coach all the time and couples that are really struggling is, what do you have on your calendar for mm -hmm. three months from now? What do you, you know, you plan a, a, a you know, you think almost like a ceremony. Yes, yes. This This year for Christmas, my wife and I are getting a trip for each other. That's what we're going to spend our money on. Instead of buying stuff, mm -hmm. we're going to go get away for a weekend somewhere. That's good. Just the That's two good. of us, just to go. <sighs> and to re-up. Yeah. It just, really is. So, so who are you? Yes. What's been going on? And I know we've been talking about And that about takes it. commitment, doesn't it? It, takes, it? it literally matters that you decide, I will not give up. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that this is not going to be perfect hardly ever. Right. But I'm never going to give up because this is the man for me. And this you've is the just woman defined a hero marriage. <laughs> will a, that's, not that's, that's, give up. Again, see, you see the magic behind that now? <laughs> uh, yes. That's why, I, that's why I chose the name is that, is that be a hero. And by the way, the impact reverberates. Yes. And, you know, having been in, and anybody who watches me knows that having been in a marriage that was broken mm -hmm. um, terribly because of infidelity, and mm. mine and Jeff's was at 17 years, but then realizing that we were not going to give up. Um, we, our marriage is, we, are, we, have a, we have a phenomenal marriage. And nobody ever even believes now seeing us mm -hmm. that we were ever at this place where we couldn't stand each other's air um, because of just that I'm, this is God's, this is God's institution, therefore we will not give up. And mm -hmm. so, you know, you move through all the things you have to move through, and it, it is better. Mm -hmm. And it is better because you don't give up and because you put it in the hands of the Lord. So then when you say, ultimately, you've had at least two, two separate marriages to oh, the same least, person. at least. Yeah. Yeah. One of the lies that our culture says is if this one's not working out, just go pick you a new one. That's right. That's right. Well, that will never have the trust and depth mm -hmm. level that, you know, here it is. You can talk about this brokenness in your relationship. And I'm sure there's a, there's a bit of a pain every time your husband knows that you, you say that about his past, mm -hmm. right? And yet it's authentic. Yes. And we now live in, you know, that's, that's one of the things we know about our culture right now is we're, we're begging. People are begging for authenticity. Absolutely. And then, and understanding, as I said earlier, that that commitment is not contingent. Well, like I said, contingent commitment. what does this teach our children? So, you know, my kids know. You know, mom and dad aren't perfect, but man, are they committed to each other. Yes, that's so what my boys know. They know that. They, how, as a matter of fact, I just had a conversation with my son this morning as he's speaking to his fiance, saying, you need to understand, we went through some really hard times mm. as a family, but my parents are committed to one another. And so this is what I've known, and this is what I know about relationship. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. The Lord yeah. uses all of those things. Well, we're out of time, um, but really? I do. Yes. Well, <laughs> We were out of time a while ago, but I didn't want to stop. <laughs> so I want to, I know that you are going to give us kind of a little code. For, yes. Uh, um, for, did you figure out what yes. that was? The code is Dr. Deb, D-R-D-E-B. <laughs> and where, D are the, where do they go? To no spaces. It? Dr. Deb. It can be capitals or a lowercase, either one. And they'll go to uh, They way. go to HeroMarriage.com. Okay. And what it is, so that discount is going to be half off. Oh, uh, everything. Can I use it? You can. Okay. You can use <laughs> because it. Because I'm already ready to go order something. Yeah. Dr. Deb, <laughs> uh, uh, again, all caps are all lowercase. I don't know, like mix, upper level, lowercase, but either one of those will work. And it'll be 50% off the, the, the face value of all my courses right now. Really? So I've got Hero Relationships. I've got Hero Marriage. And those are both six-week courses mm -hmm. where you have... What's cool about my courses is I teach on something like what we taught today. Yes. And then I give you action steps. Very good. So a lot of what great relationships are is about doing. Yes. Not yes. just about learning. Right. It's about doing. Absolutely. So that's what I do is the work here is that you now doing the work together. Yes. And, and doing these activities and learning about it. Excellent. So. Well, thank you so much. Mike. You're welcome. I always have so much good time when I'm with you. Good. It's Me a too. blast. I've learned so much. Well, God bless all of you. I pray that you go to heromarriage.com and you, I'm going to use, I mean, I am Dr. Deb and I intend to go type that in here pretty soon <laughs> and use that half off coupon thing to get some of these courses. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Thank you. We'll have you back on again. All right. We'll all see right. you then. God bless you. I'll see you. Thank you for joining me today on this episode of Real Life with Deb Waterbury. I hope it's been a blessing to you as much as it was to me. You know, if you want any of my books or information on articles or any of my speaking engagements, you can go to my website at debwaterberry.com. God bless you.